The Story of the Sibylline Books and King Tarquinius Superbus by Aulus Gellius, 125 to 180 A.D. From the Attic Nights, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. In the ancient annals, this story is related of the Sibylline Books. Footnote. The Sibylline Books. The Sibyls and the oracles called Sibylline present an almost inexhaustible subject for critical and learned investigation. My object is the general information of the less informed English reader. The Sibyls were women, presumed to have the power of predicting future events. Of these there were many, but the precise number is disputed. Their origin is derived from Persia, but their talent of prophesying was supposed to be derived from the influence of the constellation called Virgo in the natural world. The verses collected and published under the name of the Sibylline Oracles are universally allowed to be spurious, but it is evident that the Romans in particular revered these predictions as sacred and on all important occasions consulted them. Ten, or as Gallius and some others affirm, fifteen eminent Romans were appointed to superintend and examine them. The most celebrated of the Sibyls were the Erethian, the Delphic, and the Cumian, and the books above mentioned were preserved till the times of the civil wars between Scylla and Marius. And footnote. An old woman who was an utter stranger went to Tarquin the Proud, when king, carrying with her nine books, which she said were divine oracles. She offered to sell them. Tarquin inquired the price. The old woman asked an immense and extravagant sum. The king, supposing her to dote from age, laughed at her. She kindled a fire and burned three of the nine books, and then asked the king to buy the remaining six at the same price. On this Tarquin derided her still more, and told her that doubtless she was mad. The woman immediately burned three more books, and at the same time mildly asked him if he would purchase the three that were left, at the same price. Tarquin then assumed a more serious aspect, and began to deliberate. He perceived that this consistency and firmness was not to be disregarded. He purchased the last three books at the same price that was demanded for the whole. But this woman, having left Tarquin's presence, was never afterwards to be found. They were called the Sibylline Books and deposited in a sacred place. When the immortal gods were publicly to be consulted, the fifteen go to these as an oracle. End of The Story of the Sibylline Books and King Tarquinius Superbus by Aulus Gellius